Well, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and uh, we've got the new year coming up in a few days. I was spoiled a little bit at Christmas. Tina, the wife, she got me one of these. And you can see that. A Stoger XM1 S4. So in true Mad Dog Airgun style, we're going to do an unboxing. Um, now, unboxing videos are notoriously boring. Um, it takes all the excitement out of getting a a new parcel yourself. You know what you're going to get in it. So with that being said, now it's unboxed. <laughs> we just pop these down. And we'll get rid of the box. Job's done. Look at that. Um, it was just a standard rifle. Comes with, not the scope, not the bipod. You get a raised cheek piece for the buck stock. The buck stock? The butt stock. Um, I, I did put it on, but I found that it wasn't working for me, so I took that back off again. It came fitted with a hand grip here. Uh, so I've put the extra large one on because I've got big hands. So that feels really nice in the hand now. This is the uh, the 22, the 22 version, 5.5 millimeter. So you get a rotary magazine, seven shots. Uh, I was getting a bit confused at how to load this up. Um, but you have to preload the spring first, so you turn it all the way around. Um, feed the first one in from the back, pointing that way, and then you go clockwise with that. Yeah. The instructions for loading the magazine that came with the gun wasn't as clear as they could have been. Um, but I looked on, St Stoger have got their own YouTube channel, and it's quite clear how to do it if you watch that. Also comes with a fill Pro. Um, with like a foster fitting on the end of it. That just pushes in the end there and you can fit on your pump of choice. Luckily we've got the, uh, the electric compressor now so we don't have to do it by hand, but this has only got a small reservoir on it so pumping it by hand is not too difficult. Uh, and it does come with a bag of seals, quite a comprehensive set of seals. Um, there looks to be two sets of everything in there. If you want to strip it down, service it, this, that and the other. The butt stock is adjustable. You can take those screws out and take that out. But for me, this is about as perfect as you're going to get really. Um, it's in the shoulder. I've got good eye relief on the scope. Um, and it just feels fantastic. Now this is the first rifle I've ever had with, uh, like, they call it a thumb hole stock, don't they? Um, it just feels really good. The bolt action is fantastic on this. Um, it has got an adjustable trigger. Now a lot of people have said, oh, you can adjust it for the, the weight, the pull of weight. I don't think you can on this. The adjustable trigger, just its length of pull. Um, so you can slacken off the screw and you can move the trigger blade forwards and backwards to suit your hand um, on the thing. Um, it is a, a two-stage trigger. Obviously it's not cocked at the moment, but um, it's a fantastically well-made rifle in a budget price. Now to fit the scope on, I did see another chap had done a, a video on one of these rifles perhaps a couple of years ago, and he was complaining that the scope that came with the bundle that he bought wouldn't fit because of the iron sights, the rear iron sights. Um, and he said he didn't have to take it off. Well, I just took the screw out the middle. And just I've got like a little um, hammer and punch set for working on these sort of things. Just tapped it a little bit and it just slid off and there's like a little 11 mil dovetail that the rear open sights fit on. Um, this is a Wolfer four to 12 by 50. Um, I had this on my brake barrel, Gamo Hunter, so I've put it on this, I've got to, I haven't zeroed it in yet, but it's a pretty clear picture through there. Bipod, I've got off Amazon, um, just a generic, uh, it's a 9 to 12 inch, but because they sort of fix on the side of the rifle, 
Um, you know, they're not sturdy, sturdy, but they're enough so that you can, uh, you know, I can get in position. If I wanted to, I can go for a bit of, bit of length. There we go. That feels quite good and I'm, I can keep that rifle quite steady there, so yeah. Let's so say this is the S4 edition, which basically means it's got a built-in moderator um, on the end of the barrel. Uh, it looks a bit strange, but um, yeah, it does the job. It does the it does do the job. Now a lot of people have been complaining about this piece on here. I don't know if I can get it off easy. Um, it's it covers the fill port. Well, it, it doesn't really. Can't get it off now. It is quite tight. So I don't know if you can see that, it just sort of slides off diagonally downwards. And then it, it you can see the, the gauge. Now I did fill this up yesterday. Um, and I've just fired seven shots through it. And it has gone down a little bit, but not too much. I will be doing some proper testing. Um, I've just fired this through the chronograph. I have shot this. It's not the first time I've um, obviously Tina bought it for me for Christmas and uh, she said when it turns up you ought to just check the box and make sure it's all there because when you open it up Christmas Day and there's bits missing you won't be very happy so I did have a quick look at it um, and then I had to do some shooting the other day for a video that um, for a company that we partner with on a few videos so I said to Tina I said well I need to get that video out and so she said, oh, just take it out and do some shooting. So I have done some shooting with it. I didn't have this scope on. Um, as I say, this hasn't been zeroed yet. Uh, fantastic. It does f seem to be quite accurate. Um, as I say, I'm going to do some testing outside. I'll say, I just have shot seven shots, uh, maybe nine, eight shots through the chronograph. I will put that up here while I'm actually talking. Um, in France, we are in France, I will re <laughs> reiterate that point because a lot of people get confused and say, oh, you need a firearm certificate for that, oh, you're going to end up in prison, this, that, the other. We're in France. Legally, we can have up to 20 jewels, which is just under 15 foot pounds. However, I have a Category C license. I can have unlimited power. So, this is advertised as up to 20 jewels. I think they, they normally say about 19.9, .9, something like that. Uh, I just put 7 JS. I'm not sure. I'll put it across the screen what they're called. They weigh 0.93 of a gram. I'm not sure what that is in grains. I will do a conversion. I'll put that across the screen. This is coming in at around 30 joules. Um, as I say, I have shot it. I've put a few um, pellets through it already. Um, and this was the first time I've put it through the chronograph, so sort of 30 to 32 joules. I have bought some parts for this. Uh, I've got some different size transfer ports, and I believe you can do something with a hammer spring. Um, but I'm not going to need any more than 30 joules. If it's consistent putting out 30 joules, which does seem a little bit worrying, um, if you haven't got a license and you've just bought this, from a reputable seller stating it's 20 joules and it's putting out 30. Um, I only filled it up to the 200, um, 200 bar or, I don't know, it's, yeah, it's it's only a, a very small tank on this. Um, it's powerful. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what 30, 32 joules is, but I'll, you know, I will once when I edit this video I'll put out underneath the chronograph what each jewel reading is in foot pounds um, for our friends over in the States because um, they can't get their heads around metric quite yet. <laughs> Come on people, catch up. Anyway, so this is just an unboxing. First impressions of this. Yes, the stock is plastic, polymer, whatever it is. But it is so well finished. It's knurled grip. 
It's got like a knurled piece up on here. It feels nice in the hand and in the shoulder. You know, got a good eye relief on the scope and I'm really looking forward to taking it outside and doing some shooting. As I say, I'm gonna do some testing. Um, we'll pump the cylinder all the way up to what it says on the gauge and we'll see how many shots at full power we can get and see how many shots it takes for the power to start tailing off. Uh, I've got a few, a, a, a selection of um, two two pellets, so we'll try those for accuracy and see you know the most accurate pellet that I've got. Obviously, you can get some really expensive match grade pellets, this, that, and the other. Um, but we're just going to take it outside and have some fun on the range. Um, obviously, I'll be taking the compressor out there because I can see that I'll have to pump it up every now and again. Um, I do believe Stoger say that it will do up to 50 shots on a single fill. Um, a lot of people have said that is so unrealistic. Whether that's people over in the US that don't have the legal limits that we have in Europe so that the guns are set a little bit higher power from factory, um, which is why you're not getting the shot count, whereas in the UK this would only be allowed to be 12 foot pounds. So they're sort of restricted right down. So you possibly would get a lot more shots. I'm not sure. Let's say this is putting 30 joules out on the chronograph. I will keep an eye on that and um, see if different pellets make a difference. But so far, I'm really chuffed with it. It's quiet, that moderator on the end, as you say, it's all built in. It really does seem to do a good job. Um, it keeps everything nice and quiet. Yeah, and I'm really chuffed. <laughs> there are a few tuning things you can do. Like I say, I've got the transfer. I've got a selection of transfer ports because um, Stoger is now it's owned by Beretta, I believe. So it says on the box anyway. So and this is their sort of budget version PCP. They do this. They do the ballpup version, which is. This was 250 euros. The ballpup is about 700 and something. Um, they also do the XM1 Ranger and the Scout. Um, that is sort of like um, the bolt is like a lever that you can just pull and push. Whereas this one is sort of like I've got a knurled handle on it. Um, it's easy to operate, very easy. It's just pull it back and push it forward, and the new next pellet's loaded. But um, I say the I have not seen the XM1 Scout or Ranger available in France yet. Um, but yeah, so for a budget PCP air rifle, I'm really chuffed with it. Um, we'll have to see how it goes in the, out in the, on the range. And uh, yeah, bloody marvellous. So I hope you enjoyed this little unboxing. Uh, just show you what I got for Christmas. And um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank <music> you.